Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a comparison between the Sony RX100 Mark V on the left and the RX100 Mark VI on the right. Now, these are two of the most expensive point-and-shoot cameras ever made. Of course, the brand new Mark VI that was just released or made available on July 10th, 2018, which was all of a day ago, is of course the king of the crop when it comes to pricing. A little under 1200 US dollars is the uh, small ransom you will have to pay in order to acquire one of these buttes. And I say that because the RX100 Mark VI, in my opinion, is a game changer. The Mark V to its left, $950, that is again US when it launched originally. Now you can find it for, I don't know, $50 to $75 less than retail. So these are two, the still the two most expensive point-and-shoot cameras on the market. So right here at the top of the video, I want to discuss what is different from this generation, the Mark V, to the Mark VI generation. Keep in mind, this is an adhesive grip that Sony sells. This is not part of the camera. It's about a $14 or $15 accessory, which I highly recommend no matter which RX100 model you pick up, since Sony pretty much still manufactures all of them, even though we're in our sixth generation. Sony continues to push the idea that each gen really is not a successor, but rather a complementary offering. And you can see why. It's because all of them rep uh, represent different price points and still sell exceedingly well. So again, back to what's different here. Uh, what have we lost from the Mark V to the Mark VI? No neutral density filter, which we did have on the Mark V. We also have a slower piece of glass here on the Mark VI, and we no longer have access to the play memory uh, app store. So if you were a fan of the Play Memory app store, the Mark V is where that ends. Uh, no neutral density filter. Those are really the top three things you will be missing if you pick up the more expensive brand new RX100 Mark VI. Now let's talk about what you actually gain. The Mark VI, first and foremost, most importantly, you're getting a much longer telephoto reach. You're going from 24 to 70 here with the RX100 Mark V to 24 to 200 millimeters. These are of course 35 millimeter equivalencies uh, with the Mark VI and that is a very big difference. For some of you at face value that may not seem like a lot but it literally transforms this pocketable 4K uh, both still and video beast into a bona fide video camera. Now bear in mind uh, the Mark VI, like the Mark V, is still capped at 5 minutes of 4K video recording time, but it also does now gain the benefit of having uh, not just S-Log, but hybrid uh, log gamma, which is HDR capability. So if you have a 4K TV with HDR capability, this is the first camera from Sony uh, in the CyberShot lineup that supports HDR uh, 4K video, which, in my opinion, is a pretty big bragging right. Uh, so that is something that is definitely noteworthy. Now, in terms of the downgrade uh, of the speed of this lens, uh, with the 24 to 70 millimeters afforded by the Mark V, you were looking at f1.8 to f2.8. Here we're looking at f2.8 to f4.5. Uh, so I don't see that as a tremendous drop off, not the one you would have necessarily expected considering we're going from 24 to 70 to 24 to 200. And again, that really does make the brand new Mark VI more of a video camera than simply a still camera that can shoot video as well. Both of these have uh, slow motion video capture, HFR, a high frame rate, so that still exists. I'm still not thoroughly impressed with that feature on either camera, but it's nice to have. Uh, you can shoot 120 frames per second on uh, the, on the uh, Mark VI, and then of course deal with that in post and actually get some amazing uh, slow motion results, not, you know, as per the HFR settings for the 240 frames per second in camera, which is the only mode I would ever recommend using on either of these, uh, because anything beyond that, the quality degradation is too intense. Now, when it comes to the actual build form factor, almost exactly the same. And that's the, the bit of magic that Sony has pulled off here is that even though we have literally just about the exact same footprint, design, everything, we now have a telephoto uh, option, which 
just didn't exist before. And this seems to be the common trend for Sony these days. The majority of their movement has been towards telephoto, at least when it comes to point and shoot. We saw this evolution with the RX10 lineup. Now we have it here in the RX100 lineup. And in my opinion, this is a welcomed addition because the Mark V is certainly not antiquated in any way. In fact, between the neutral uh, the ND filter, as well as the play memory access, and then most importantly, the faster glass, it still remains beyond competent and relevant. Both of these have the same 1-inch 20-megapixel sensor, the same autofocus prowess with 315 points of phase detection, giving you, uh, I would say, interchangeable uh, camera-like, uh, an interchangeable camera body-like autofocus system in a pocketable form factor. And that all began with the Mark V and of course has transitioned here with the Mark VI. Some other noteworthy things that you should be aware of in terms of design changes, the EVF. You can see right now looking at my video, they're not exactly the same size and that's because Sony has made it touchless. So with the Mark V, you would simply just flip this out and on comes your camera and then you'd have to pop out the EVF. That is how it would work. If you wanted to close the EVF, slide it back in, push it back down, it powers the camera down. Now with the Mark VI, you have the ability that once you hit that, it's completely ready to go, ready to shoot. Uh, no more pulling out the EVF, pushing the EVF back in. You simply just push it back down, end of story. So that's one thing I wanted to point out. Both of these cameras, of course, have... Uh, you know, displays that are ideal for vloggers uh, and those of you addicted to taking pictures of yourself and loved ones uh, because the screen does uh, articulate at least to accommodate that front forward shot. Uh, that is nothing new, not an upgrade, but definitely a nice add-on. It does seem that this has a little bit more uh, movement, that is the Mark VI's LCD, than the Mark V, which uh, firmly uh, sticks right there. You can see the difference. The Mark VI actually is able to come over and around the body a little bit, whereas the Mark V is not. Now, in terms of performance, here's what I can tell you. If you're sticking within the 24 to 70 range that the Mark V set the standard for in terms of the pocketable uh, point-and-shoot camera world, then you won't be disappointed with the results out of the Mark VI. They are very, very similar, if not almost identical, in spite of the fact that this does have a slower piece of glass attached to it. What is pleasantly surprising is that once you exceed that 70 millimeters, in spite of the fact that you don't have as fast a piece of Carl Zeiss glass fixed onto this camera, the results do not drop off. At least in my experience so far, things are pretty much as sharp as you could imagine going through the entire 24 to 200 millimeter range. You also then of course have the ability to use clear image zoom, uh, which is a nice thing to have, both cameras have it, but with the fact that now we actually have somewhat of a telephoto video camera-esque capability in an RX100 form factor, it is even more of a game changer in my mind. So when people ask me, is it worth it to go uh, from the Mark V to the Mark VI, it really depends on what you were doing with the Mark V. If the Mark V was a, primarily a still camera for you, which I imagine it would be, even though it does take exceptional 4K video, uh, if you were leaning predominantly on play memory apps for things like time lapse, as well as a workaround on the five minute recording time, even though both of these will overheat, I can assure you of that. That's why if you were wondering uh, why the 4K is capped at five minutes, it's because these cameras will overheat. Sony doesn't want you damaging the internals or wondering why or complaining as to why the 4K video is overheating. So why not just cap it at five minutes and call it a day? Uh, so again, back to why you'd want the Mark V, uh, that ND filter, uh, of course, the, the faster glass, still a welcomed addition, still the same autofocus prowess, but you just really don't care about the extra telephoto capability of the brand new Mark VI, and you don't care about the 4K HDR uh, capability, which again is something that you will not find on any other Cybershot product. The RX10 uh, Mark IV, which I love, doesn't have it. Will the Mark V? You better believe it. 
Uh, who knows what else Sony will come up with. They may even make that lens longer, but sticking to this. So if still capability is your primary focus, I still highly recommend the Mark V. There is nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's got those advantages that I mentioned about the ND filter, as well as the faster glass. And then of course, um, you know, basically that access to play memories, which I think for point and shoot users is a nicety. Uh, professionals may not care about it, but a general point and shoot user, I think would appreciate it. Now, if however, uh, the one thing that always held you back from picking up an RX100 was optical reach, and you were looking at Panasonic's logical offerings, which do have longer lenses paired with a one inch sensor, but maybe not all of the features and certainly necessarily the fidelity of what Sony puts out. For example, the RX100 Mark VI is capable of 24 frames per second. You heard correctly, 24 frames in a second. Whereas Panasonic, similar offerings, which are half the price, don't get me wrong, great value, they, I think, top out at about six frames per second. So there is clearly a dynamic difference in autofocus as well as continuous shooting performance. Uh, and I'm not, this video is not about comparing the Sony products to Panasonic, but something I have to mention because I know a lot of you are going to say, why wouldn't I just pick up the comparable Panasonic offerings? More reach, half the price, seems like a no-brainer, and I understand why. And maybe I'll end up doing a comparison if I get my hands on any of the Panasonic offerings. Right now, I'm focusing on what we've got in front of us. And to me, the Mark VI is really a most logical pickup for those of you that want to have about a 50-50 balance between video and still. Whereas the RX100, every generation that uh, preceded the Mark VI was really all about still first, video second. Uh, now, I know you'll probably bring up, yeah, but it's still limited to five minutes, even if this is more of a video camera because of its extra op optical reach. Well, that's true. However, when you think about the video that you shoot on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you're a vlogger, amateur, professional, whatever profile you cast yourself in, uh, five minutes is usually more than enough, especially if you're going to be doing editing to go from clip to clip. My biggest pet peeve with uh, the Mark VI is really the lack of a new battery type. I would have loved to have seen better battery performance out of this camera because that to me is what Sony stepped forward with uh, with the A7 line this year and I was hoping we'd see a similar transition with the RX100 lineup but of course uh, it is a pocketable camera. Size is uh, at the top of the list here and as a result that is one of the areas where things suffer. Now in terms of powering both of these on so that you can actually see uh, what the lens looks like. You can see as soon as I power them on, uh, the RX100 Mark V actually is extended more. But as I actually uh, go more telephoto, you can see that's where things change drastically. Uh, not comparable uh, in terms of the barrel that's inside of, well, even though I'm missing that, inside of the Mark V versus Mark VI. Uh, power on and off time, a little bit faster on the Mark V. Uh, I'm going to try that again. Oh, that one is my fault because of uh, settings, so not a proper test. Uh, but they're very close. So again, uh, the only reason that the Mark VI didn't immediately extend uh, when I powered it on was because it still has the language menu up. I've been a little bit lazy, so I didn't set the the time zone and things like that. So you'll have to forgive me. After all, I have had the camera for all of, now this is day two uh, that I'm spending with it. But overall, very similar. Uh, the Mark V, a little bit faster, but that's something that can likely be addressed in firmware if I had to guess. Uh, but overall performance from both of these is stellar. You're not going to find complaint with the still images or the video that either of them takes. Of course, the video here is superior, not just because you have uh, more telephoto flexibility, but because, as I've mentioned, it is HDR uh, capable, something that, uh, you know, you cannot do with the Mark V. And that is another reason to look at this as more of a complementary model rather than an actual successor to the Mark V, because 
they are completely different. If this had a 24 to 70 mil lens and all they had changed was the EVF and maybe made the autofocus faster, giving us more phase detection points, then I would say it's clearly just a successor and a nominal upgrade. But here you're clearly paying for the fact that this has now become not only the best pocketable camera, but also the best pocketable video camera, even with its uh, time uh, constraints, that five minute cap. Another thing I want to address, which a lot of people have asked me about, complained about, and this is not specific to the uh, cameras we're looking at here, but all RX100s, where is that microphone input? And quite frankly, there isn't one, and there likely never will be one, and that's because Sony is not trying to give you a professional piece of gear here. Now, that's not to say a mic jack couldn't be stuck in there. I'm not opposed to it, but clearly Sony is, and whether that's because they see it as a way of cannibalizing other higher-end cameras that they sell, that they think professionals will want to lean on. That may be the reason. I don't know. I'm not really here to speculate on it, but what I can tell you is that you are still limited to Wi-Fi, NFC connectivity. Again, play memories on the left with the Mark V, no play memories with the Mark VI. Wish they would have retained it, but that's now apparently company policy. Um, and essentially, you know, virtually an identical camera, but again, the Mark VI now, the best pocketable still and video camera in my opinion, but many will make the argument that the Mark V is still the best pocketable still camera because of the faster glass uh, and the ND filter, and I understand why. But again, when it comes to inputs and outputs, um, you are going to just be dealing with the micro USB, aka Sony's multi-port, as well as HDMI out. And that's it. They're in the exact same spot. Nothing has changed there at all. Uh, and the Wi-Fi and NFC, you know, still good to have on board. Uh, I'm not seeing any increased throughput, uh, throughput with what it's capable of. But uh, again, still something I expect since we've had it for so many years now from Sony. Uh, and essentially, as I mentioned at the top of this video, you're not going to go wrong with either of these cameras. They are top of the line in every way. Um, and those that question the price point, uh, show me some another camera that really competes with it. This isn't about what you can buy with the amount of money that is not similar. So when people say, oh, I could buy a digital SLR, I could buy you know, the Sony a6500, which is likely a comparison I'll do down the road, um, I kind of feel like you're exercising your own thoughts and I understand where you're coming from. You want to apply your budget as best as possible. But the reality is, is that if you're looking at an RX100, budget really isn't at the top of your list, let's be honest. What is at the top of your list is a pocketable camera that's going to give you the best of everything. And guess what? The RX100 Mark VI just took that level of everything up uh, because we now have, as I've mentioned throughout the course of this video, the best pocketable video camera as well as still camera on the market. Even if you have to live without that microphone input, and for those of you that are complaining about it, don't you generally use dedicated uh, audio that isn't necessarily integrated into the camera? And if you don't, and you are a professional, isn't that relatively easy to do? The answer is yes. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.